Imagine a night when the boundaries between worlds fade, where ancient rituals disguise faces and flickering lights ward off restless spirits. Halloween, a modern celebration of costumes and candy, hides a darker, mystical past rooted in Celtic lore and Christian traditions. But what if trick-or-treating began as a plea for the dead, where those glowing pumpkins once held souls in their hollowed forms? How did this blend of sacred rites and supernatural legends evolve into the holiday we know today? Journey into Halloween's eerie origins. Welcome to I Talk Myth. Halloween's roots trace back to the Celtic festival of Samhain, an ancient Gaelic celebration marking the end of the harvest and the beginning of winter. Occurring from October 31st to November 1st, Samhain was believed to be a time when the veil between the living and spirit realms was thin, allowing souls and supernatural beings to wander freely. To honor and protect against these spirits, communities held ritualistic bonfires believed to offer warmth, light, and protection against malevolent forces. Modern customs like dressing up in costumes, trick-or-treating, and pumpkin carving echo Celtic traditions of disguises, mumming, and turnip lanterns, evolving over centuries into the Halloween we know today. Samhain, one of the most significant festivals in ancient Celtic culture, marked the seasonal shift from harvest to winter. Celebrated from October 31st to November 1st, it symbolized the year's final harvest and the beginning of the darker half of the year. The Celts believed that during Samhain, the boundary between the physical and spiritual worlds grew thin, allowing spirits, both benign and malevolent, to cross into the human realm. Communities gathered to light bonfires on hilltops, an act believed to repel harmful spirits and protect against winter's challenges. This festival embodied both the gratitude for a fruitful harvest and reverence for the mysteries of the unseen world. Bonfires played a powerful role in Samhain celebrations, representing protection, purification, and a symbolic resistance against winter's darkness. The Celts would gather on hilltops to build large fires which served as beacons of light against the encroaching cold season. These fires symbolized the sun's strength, believed to hold back the winter's chill and dark forces. Community members would extinguish their home hearths and then relight them with flames from the communal bonfire, symbolizing unity and shared resilience. The fire rituals also acted as a cleansing force, where the smoke was believed to ward off evil spirits, offering both warmth and protection. The Halloween custom of trick-or-treating has roots in Samhain traditions of mumming, guising, and sewing. During Samhain, villagers would dress in costumes, often resembling spirits, and go door-to-door -door performing songs, skits, or prayers. Mummers entertained with masked performances, while those guising asked for food or materials to contribute to bonfires. Souling involved people, often children, offering prayers for the souls of the deceased in exchange for soul cakes or small offerings. These customs, blending playful performance, charity, and commemoration of the dead, evolved over centuries, culminating in the modern tradition where costumed children collect treats on Halloween night. Mumming, a centuries-old tradition, involved actors donning colorful costumes and masks to perform short plays, dances, or skits, often door-to-door. -door. Popular in Celtic regions, Mummers would act out tales with festive, comedic themes, symbolizing prosperity, protection, and celebration. In exchange, they were given food, drink, or small tokens of appreciation. This interactive tradition added a theatrical element to community gatherings, blending humor and ritual in a way that resonates with today's Halloween customs. Over time, mumming's playful spirit of costume performance an exchange laid the foundation for the Halloween practice of trick-or-treating, where children now knock on doors in disguise to receive treats. Guising, a centuries-old tradition in Celtic lands, involved villagers, especially children, dressing in disguises and visiting neighbors' homes, performing brief skits, songs, or jokes in exchange for small treats or tokens. Costumes concealed their identities, helping participants blend in with spirits believed to roam during Samhain while their performances spread joy and fostered community ties. This practice grew popular in Scotland and Ireland, where it became a vital part of local festivities. 
As Irish and Scottish immigrants brought guising traditions to America, the practice evolved, contributing directly to today's Halloween custom of trick-or-treating, where children in costume now exchange entertainment for treats on Halloween night. Sewing, a Christian tradition observed especially on All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day, involved people, often children or the poor, visiting homes in their communities to offer prayers for the dead in return for food. These visitors were given soul cakes, small round cakes spiced with currants, symbolizing the souls in purgatory. By accepting a soul cake, the giver pledged their prayers to ease the soul's journey. This act of charity intertwined remembrance, prayer, and generosity in a practice that became woven into Halloween customs. As the tradition crossed cultural lines, the practice of souling evolved, merging with Samhain customs to shape Halloween's charitable spirit. Today's trick-or-treating echoes souling's essence, where costumed children go door-to-door -door seeking treats, adding a playful twist to the ancient charitable ritual. The Halloween tradition of carving pumpkins originated from a Celtic practice of carving root vegetables, particularly turnips, for Samhain. During this festival, Celts believed that spirits roamed freely among the living. And to ward off these wandering souls, villagers carved eerie faces into turnips and other root vegetables. Hollowed and lit with candles, these makeshift lanterns were thought to protect homes from malevolent spirits. When Irish immigrants brought this custom to America, they found pumpkins, a larger, easier-to-carve option, more suited to the tradition. Pumpkins quickly replaced turnips as the preferred jack-o'-lantern, a name inspired by the tale of Stingy Jack, a ghostly figure said to roam with his own carved lantern. This iconic Halloween decoration retains the essence of the Celtic tradition, lighting up doorsteps as a symbol of protection against dark forces. This has always blown my mind. A little bit of 95% of you who listen to the story regularly haven't yet subscribed to this channel. So, I would like to ask you for a favor before we start. If you like the story, you like what we do here, and you want to support us, the free simple way that you can do just that is by hitting the subscribe button, and my commitment to you is if you do that, then I'll do everything in my power. Me and my team will make sure that this channel is better for you. For every single video, we'll listen to your feedback, we'll find the guests that you want to talk about, and we'll continue to do what we do. Thank you. The Legend of Stingy Jack, a cunning trickster from Irish folklore is at the heart of the jack-o'-lantern tradition. Known for his deceitfulness, Jack once trapped the devil himself by carving a cross into a tree, refusing to free him until the devil agreed to spare Jack's soul from hell. However, upon his death, Jack's unsavory deeds barred him from heaven, while the devil, true to his word, denied him entry to hell. Left to wander the earth, Jack carried only a burning coal to light his way which he placed inside a hollowed turnip, creating the first jack-o'-lantern. Irish villagers, hoping to ward off Jack's spirit and other wandering souls, began carving their own lanterns from turnips and potatoes. When Irish immigrants arrived in America, they adopted pumpkins for the tradition, giving rise to the iconic Halloween jack-o'-lantern. Dressing up in costumes for Halloween has roots in ancient Celtic practices such as guising and mumming, Traditions that helped people navigate the spirit-filled world of Samhain. During this festival, Celts believed the boundary between the physical and spirit worlds was thinnest, allowing spirits to roam freely. People wore costumes to disguise themselves from any malevolent spirits, blending into a void attracting supernatural attention. Geysers, especially children, would go door-to-door -door in costume, performing songs or skits in exchange for small gifts, while mummers enacted festive plays to entertain their communities. Over time, these practices merged with Christian customs and crossed continents with Irish and Scottish immigrants. Now a core Halloween tradition, costumes have evolved to symbolize the playful connection to Halloween's mystical past, blending ancient beliefs with modern celebration. The name Halloween originates from the term All Hallows' Eve, the evening before All Saints' Day, a Christian holiday on November 1st dedicated to remembering the dead, including saints and martyrs. When Christianity spread to Celtic regions, it encountered Samhain, the ancient Gaelic festival celebrating the end of harvest and the start of winter. As Christian and Celtic customs intertwined, All Hallows' Eve took on elements of Samhain's supernatural themes, evolving into a night marked by remembrance, 
mystery, and protection from wandering spirits. Over time, All Hallows' Eve was shortened to Halloween, capturing both the reverence of Christian observance and the celebratory, mystical aspects of Samhain. This blend of traditions laid the groundwork for Halloween's unique character, which balances the sacred and the spooky in its modern form. Christianity's spread across Celtic lands had a profound impact on the evolution of Halloween. To assimilate local customs, the church established All Saints' Day on November 1st, dedicated to honoring saints and martyrs, followed by All Souls' Day on November 2nd, to remember all the departed. These observances align closely with Samhain, the Celtic festival marking the transition to winter and a time when the veil between worlds was believed to thin. Over generations, Samhain's customs of honoring the dead, lighting protective fires, and wearing disguises became interwoven with the themes of All Saints and All Souls Days. This blending brought Samhain's mystical, protective elements into the Christian framework, allowing Halloween to emerge as a celebration rooted in both remembrance and ancient folklore. The holiday retained its supernatural aura, adapting religious themes of protection, reverence, and commemoration into its modern form. Dare to uncover the secrets beneath Halloween's playful facade? Step into the shadows of ancient Samhain, where bonfires burned for protection and carved lanterns guided wandering souls. Discover how centuries-old rituals and spectral tales transformed into the Halloween we celebrate today. Will you look beyond the candy and costumes to the eerie, mystical roots that haunt this night? Click on the following video where you will find the eerie and mystical.